Here's a question. Is it possible to change? And I mean to change very, very markedly in life. Uh, or are we just condemned to uh, say we made a little bit of progress in life and now we're in massive recovery for the rest of our time? And uh, maybe we cut off drugs and now we're uh, doing something else. Workaholism, um, relationship addictions, and um, uh, new drugs of choice that aren't chemical in nature. Is it possible to markedly change? Some would say no. Um, a zebra can't change its stripes. Um, yeah, you just can't change change your essence, and uh, that there's a strong genetic component to it all that many people might say. And we've all seen people go to rehab, come out, and go back and back and back if they uh, are so inclined. Why is it possible or not possible, rather, to make strong changes and never to have to go back and never to have to take up very strong uh, alternative drugs of choice, if you will, even if they're not chemical in nature? You might put it this way. Why then do a number of people tend to yo-yo in life, uh, good patches of time, and then back to the old habits, so to speak. Whether it's um, for some cigarettes, overeating, what have you. Why this yo-yo effect? Well, I know that those coming out of rehab uh, for chemical-based addictions are told to drop all their old friends and to change possibly or likely where they live to get into, shall we say, less tempting circumstances. And you might say, if one were once imbibing too much in terms of alcohol, that one might not want to frequent the bars too much or discos in the future. But interestingly, what I see all too often happening with people who come out of rehab or conquer certain aspects of trauma they had in the past, physical, sexual, neglect related, um, that there's one element missing here, not just shifting to a different type of environment. Um, what I see oftentimes not done is what you might call unplugging completely in stages. What I mean by unplugging is making changes so that one spends a significant portion of time uh, here and there in one's week being alone with one's thoughts. Being alone in one's thoughts in a room uh, is the phrase put out by some philosophers. Uh, for instance, Camus, the um, French philosopher, I believe, French. Now, of course, um, that isn't going to be possible uh, in one fell swoop for anyone, I think. Um, you might call that, in psychological terms, if that were to happen, um, kind of a crisis. What do they call it? Um, there's a term for that where you, where you go um, flooding, um, desensitization by flooding. We tend to want to have a more comfortable approach, so more of a baby step approach to uh, being with our fears. Uh, as per the issue of uh, distractions. To be alone in a room with your own thoughts requires a minimum of distractions. And isn't that then the essence of a um, chemical-based uh, addiction? Uh, alcohol, meth, heroin, uh, issues with marijuana use, etc even overindulgence in food, as if uh, one had a large spread of Thanksgiving banquet food uh, three, four times a week. 
instead of uh, a couple times a year. Noting that uh, for the longest time, many a rural person in China had one chicken a year that they consumed, by the way. Interesting. Some would say then that the essence of sexaholism is um, overindulgence in that form of um, pleasure ex expression for distractive purposes. And of course, there being a little bit of an ego booster there too for some people. Uh, and sometimes even a um, um, desire to have a negative impact on the other person at the same time. Kind of a big combo deal going on there. I'm reminded of the movie, The Razor's Edge. Um, was it based on a script by Somerset Maugham, the writer? Uh, back in the 50s, the movie came out, I believe. Fascinatingly great movie. And there was a... Uh, Tyrone Powers played a role uh, in which uh, he was seeking more than the average person in life. Went to India, talked with a um, person there, uh, and decided to go up a mountain and stay in a hut for about a half a year. Alone with his thoughts in a room, i.e. with a minimal of distractors. Uh, noting he did not pack up with a family and go there. He wasn't married. No children, no radio, no podcast, no computer, no boombox, no nothing. I'm not even sure he took a pad of paper and pen, although that probably would have been very handy for growing. So my question is then, how many people do this in modern ages? Maybe they want to go uh, to an ashram, say, and grow and approximate this, but isn't that like going bird watching um, with the Audubon Society in an urban area and um, having 20 other bird watchers um, almost elbow to elbow with you? Um, is that being alone in a room with your own thoughts then? So that things percolate to the surface that you might ordinarily not um, find so pleasurable? I don't think so. Uh, these days it's hard to even be alone in a room uh, in a nature preserve way out of the countryside without um, hearing a jet go by every five minutes or uh, a farmer uh, having a uh, motorized vehicle uh, zoom by while checking the cattle. So the upshot and finality of this message, I guess, is that I think very, very few people coming out of rehab, so to speak, uh, go on, on the mountaintop for an extended period of time, and I mean alone. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, so why would we expect them to make appreciable changes when they never do tend to get alone with themselves for more than a few minutes at a time? Even noting that uh, my experiences with a meditative center 15 years ago that I spent uh, every Saturday morning at for two years was done uh, side by side a whole bunch of other people granted no music playing but it also then the case that some people take up meditation with music in the background I don't know about you but I find it impossible to think or have anything percolate to the surface of my conscious consciousness while music is going um, hence why I think um, why I think we call uh, the yo-yoing effect um, back and forth to rehab, or what we might call uh, relapses, what have you, to be due to how few people really unplug and go to the mountaintop, so to speak, and uh, go through extended periods of time without these massive numbers of distractors, even meditative music.